245, hymn 245, we only count with seven, and we will sing all four verses, hymn 245.
Hymn 243, hymn 243, Victory in Jesus, and we will sing all three verses. Hymn 243. So uh, 
One of our guests, pre uh, our, our one of our guest judges preached this morning, and so he's going to judge for us. I'm going to be a judge, and the other judge. Right now, we're not going to name who they are. We want to keep some suspense, and so make sure you're here. Uh, again, you you might say, "Well, I don't like chili." Well, we're going to have non-chili food for the abnormal people. Okay, uh, so. Again, send me a message, Facebook. If, if you're going to be here, send me a message. We want to make sure we have uh, uh, enough of everything so everybody's taken care of. And we're excited. It's going to be fun. Uh, I can't tell you the last time we had a meal together. It's, it's a, as they say, it's been a coon's age. And it's an old coon at that. All right? All right. Now we come to the time to worship the Lord with his tithe and our offering. Brother Jim. If you'll come, sir, we'll split the duties. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll pray and you can uh, receive the offering. All right? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we truly are thankful for another good day that you've given us in your house. It's been a blessing to come and uh, this morning for the Sunday school hour and the morning service and even tonight being able to sing praises unto you and of rejoice in the truths that we find in your word. Now, fathers, we come and uh, we want to worship you with our tithe and our offering. We do ask that you would accept it from a grateful and a joyful heart and that it would be used for the furtherance of the gospel. Lord, help us to be conscious of your presence. And we ask this in your blessed and holy name. Amen. Amen.
that we see uh, was, uh, well, first it, it's death, but to go more into that is not only was there a promise of death, but Jesus said that he will rise again. So, uh, again, uh, death was a for sure thing, right? It, it wasn't Lazarus was, was uh, sleeping as maybe the, as the disciples thought yeah. that Jesus was saying. Lazarus wasn't sleeping. Uh, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't that Lazarus passed out. Right. Lazarus was dead. And I, and I love, I love it. And I, I might say it until we get off uh, of the Lazarus account. But I love Jesus' response to the disciples. Because the Bible says, And Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Yeah. He said, this is about, I, I'm going to dumb it down for you guys. <laughs> Lazarus is dead. All right, that's not a metaphor. This isn't some kind of analogy. It's plain and simple. Lazarus is dead. Okay? And, and so, he told the disciples, hey, Lazarus, Lazarus is dead. Okay? They don't throw a, a funeral for passed out people. You know, uh, or, or even, even for uh, uh, Lazarus also, well, I'll throw this one out there. Lazarus wasn't in a coma either. That's right. Okay? Uh, Lazarus, the Bible says, Lazarus was dead. Okay? There was uh, 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 a funeral for him. And then even after that, when Jesus came, he said, hey, where's the, where's the body? She said, whoa. Well, Martha said, hmm, probably not. Um, because he's been dead for four days. And uh, by now, I'm sure he stinks. You know, I've never been out to the Middle East. Uh, but I know it's hot. I know it's hot there. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen videos where these people are running across the street and their shoes are melting to the asphalt or whatever they're running across. Okay? That's pretty hot. Yeah. Right? Now, here in Florida, uh, it's hot. Okay? <laughs> but not once have I ever walked across. Or that, they were running. Okay? They weren't walking. They were running. That's how, that's how hot it was. Right? Not once have it... Uh, have I walked or ran across the road and my, my shoes melted, right? But it's still hot, okay? And so, this, so Florida is the best thing that I have because I'm here, right? And I know that if you leave, you leave a, a particular food, you know, I, I, I can't think of one at the moment, but you leave a particular food. Hamburger. Hamburger. Uh, I wouldn't, nah, I wouldn't do that because it would cook you. I'm trying to find something that, if you leave something in the car, milk, milk there you go, that's okay, y'all use milk. I'll use milk, okay? <laughs> if you leave milk in the car, eggs too, that's a good one too. You leave milk and eggs, whoo, in the car, okay? <laughs> and a hamburger, all right? You leave it in the car, and it's blistering hot. I guarantee you, once you open up that door, you're soon to close it. Yeah. Because that sucker's going to stink. Or you open up all of them. Right. Or you just say, Lord, just block my nostrils for a few minutes. You know, let me smell, the, you know, let me, let me smell flowers or something, you know. <laughs> but it's going to stink. You know, and, and I've never smelt, and I, Lord, please don't let me. I've never smelled a dead body before. But I've heard it does not smell pretty, right? And I imagine since they're in the Middle East and they were in a tomb that's probably made out of stone, and stones heat up pretty good, I imagine that it was probably warm. And here it is, this body stinks. And Martha said, Lord, he's been dead for three days. He stinks. We don't want to. We don't want to roll it over. Yes. Somebody. You're good. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Don't want to roll over that stone because, Lord, it's, he stinks. He, you know, it's not going to smell good. And so, Lazarus, he was dead. Because if he was, 
in a coma or if he was passed out or, or if he was sleeping, Martha would have said, yeah, hey, the stone's right here, not a problem. Go do what you got to do. But she said, Let, he, he's dead. Right? And so Jesus knew that he was going to die. And then he said here, Martha, your brother's dead. But your brother shall rise again. He's going to, as soon, soon as I walk over there and I do what I need to do, he's going to rise again. Yeah. You know, and, and, and uh, I don't think, and, and, and reading it, I, this is how I take it, I don't think that she fully comprehended. Because again, I believe that she put death as a limitation on Jesus. She says, there's no cure for death. There's no coming back from death, from, from being dead. And she said, Lord, I, I know I know that, you know, he's going to rise and talk about in, in, in the resurrection of the day. When the rapture happens, I know that he's going to rise again. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. He was saying right now, today, today your brother is going to rise again. And, and, and he even said in verse 25 again, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Though we're dead, yet shall he live. You know, here it is. Lazarus doesn't have to wait. And I'm the resurrection. He doesn't have to wait until the rapture Amen. comes. He doesn't. You know, he says, I am that resurrection. I am the life. I, I'm the one. You know, I can bring them back to life. I will bring them back to life. You know, and, and, and again, I just, I don't, I don't feel like I don't feel like, uh, again, that she fully comprehended. And, and I discussed that last week, how I feel like that was not a good enough answer to Martha. Because later on, you can read that she sends Mary. You know, I don't know that whole conversation. She might have said, uh, Mary, Jesus is here. Uh, or, yeah, Mary, Jesus is here. He wants to talk to you. You know, um, try to see what you can get out of him. You know, we don't understand why he's late. Try to try to try to see what's going on, you know, and, and again, same, same same result with uh, or same question as with Mary. Lord, if you would have been here, yeah, our brother, you, you could have healed our brother, and he would have been here, you know. And, and I feel like you know Jesus uh, just uh, I know it kind of, I know it hurt Jesus, and and I know you know I. I I know he's human, right? We all know he's human, so he, he felt for them. But I, I, I felt like he felt bad because here it is. He's telling these people, he's telling Mary and Martha and the, the ones that are there, Lazarus is dead, yes, but I'm going to raise him back to life, right? I've done other miracles. This isn't my first. I can understand, all right? I can understand. I would totally understand if this was the first miracle that Jesus did, right? I'm going to bring him back to life. Nobody's ever done that before. Yeah. Okay? Lord, you know what? That seems a little far-fetched. You know? I don't know. You know, but Jesus done other miracles before. And they've seen them. And here it is. Again, they, 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 they put that barrier. He said death is the limitation that even, even Jesus himself. And, and I'll even say God because Martha said, I, I believe that you're God. I believe that you're the one that was that is sent for us. And so she put still put that limitation on God, saying, God cannot do anything about death. Once they're dead, they're dead. Now, we believe that Lazarus is saved, so we don't have to worry about him being in hell, but he's dead. And so here it is that again Jesus said, I'm promising you, okay, this this is. This, I mean, you want to talk about the greatest promise. You know, back in the day, before my time, around some of y'all's time, <laughs> uh, a man's word was that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Was that. You didn't need to have a contract, you know, notarized, and you didn't have to have lawyer, lawyers involved and stuff like that. You know, all it took was a handshake. You say, hey, I'm going to mow you on. Okay. You... Better believe that person's going to mow your lawn. Now, the thing is, is there's been some times, even back in that day, when people's words were broken. 
right? But here it is. Jesus said, I promise you, Lazarus is going to rise again. Amen. No greater promise can anybody ever hear than that of God. Because God will never, can't, can't break a promise. And so Jesus says he will rise again. And he promised that. And, I mean, we, we read the end. We see that he kept his promise. And so that was one of the promises. The other promises uh, is uh, about uh, dependence. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to read, uh, reread verse 25. We're going to reread verse 25. And the Bible says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then here it is. Believest thou this. Right? And he asked Jesus, or excuse me, he asked Martha. Martha, believest thou this? In other words, Martha, is your faith in me that which, what I'm telling you, that you can fully trust that he's going to rise again right now? Martha, are you trusting me with everything? Martha, fully trust me. Again, I believe that Martha was saved. I believe that. Uh, I just, again, I mean, I put myself in her shoes, and, and, and I can't sit here and say that uh, I wouldn't have the same reaction as she would, that she did. Uh, but Martha, I believe, again, was doubting Jesus. And after Jesus has said, Martha, I'm telling you, he's going to rise again. I am the resurrection. I am the life. And... and, and Martha, believe this? Don't, don't you believe? You know, and, and we see that, again, Jesus uh, doesn't have any limitations. Again, and, and, and we read, and, and, uh, we read the, the latter part of, of this story, and, and we see that not even death itself. Because you even read later on, not only can Jesus rise other people from the grave, Jesus did something that nobody can ever do, uh, I don't care who you are, is rise yourself from the grave. Right. Okay? Now, Jesus was in the same boat as Lazarus. Jesus was dead. Okay? Uh, and later on, I'm going to do a... Uh, part of the impossible cases here about Jesus' death, but Jesus was dead, right? Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of things that you just, when you read about it, you're like, yeah, there's no, there's no way he could be alive after that, right? And so Jesus died. Now, granted, he wasn't there for three days or four days. Doesn't matter. He was dead for three days. Still, even if he were dead for, you know, a day, it's still pretty impressive, to rise, to, to, to say, you know what? I don't feel like being dead anymore. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me get out of here. You know? Jesus has no limitations. Jesus, Jesus the Bible says that Jesus has the keys to, to the lake of fire for death. Jesus said, hey, you know what? I got the keys, death. There's going to come a day when as the, as the child song goes, you take the keys, you lock it up, and you throw it away. Death's not going to be around much longer. And Jesus says, listen, I'm promising you. And um, uh, there's a lot of, if you want to jot them down, uh, there's a lot of promises. Uh, I, don't, I don't have time. I'm, tr I'm trying to do this uh, not too fast, but trying to not make a whole month out of this little thing right here. Uh, but there's a lot of promises that Jesus has made. And, and there's uh, one, two, three, four. I mean, there's more, but just right here. Four verses about the promise of salvation. And again, I'll just, I'll just quote them or uh, read the, the, the context of them, which is John 3.16, Acts 16.31, 1 
Romans 10, verse 9 and 13. And I encourage you to write them down and then later on looking at them. Uh, there are promises about sin, which, uh, which is Psalm 103, verse 12, and then 1 John 1, 9. There are promises about the future. Revelations 21, 4, and John 14, 1 through 3. There are promises about trouble, which is Philippians 6 and 7, and 1 Peter 5, 7. There are promises about loneliness, Hebrews 13, 5, Matthew 28, 20. There are promises about peace, John 14, 27, Philippians 4, 6. There are promises about needs, Matthew 6, 25 through 20, or excuse me, 33, Philippians 4, 19. And then there are promises about prayer, Jeremiah 33, 3, and Matthew 21, 22. And, you know, there, there are a large amount of other promises that are mentioned in the Bible and in all areas of life. Right? Yeah. That's what I love about the Bible is if something's going on, I can read about something that maybe somebody else went through. You know, I can see, you know, hey, I, I'm having a trouble to, to doing the right thing. You know, I, I, I know I know that uh, uh, doing the right thing is, is what the Lord wants, but maybe I'll get in trouble. You know, maybe the government is saying, you got to do this or else. Or it might be, well, you know, I, I don't really want to tell people I'm a Christian, so I just, I don't know how to do it. Well, again, looking at it, I look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar said, if you don't do this, you're going to die. Right? And what happened? They said, you know what? If we die, we die. Yeah. But no matter what, we're still not going to do what you're telling us to do because that goes against God's word. And I, I, I think of uh, Esther. Right? Esther was in a was in a pickle too. Right? I mean, she was the queen. But even the queen had restrictions. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed in the king's chambers or the throne room unless the king gave you permission. If so, you're dead. And his, his uh, excuse me, uh, Esther's uncle, Mordecai, said, Esther, God put you in this position for a reason. Sure. And right now, that reason needs to to, 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 to happen. You need to go. And, and, he, and he even said himself, he said, hey, listen, I and, I, and I believe, and I believe with all my heart, this is how he said it. He said, listen, I know it's a scary position to be in right now because it's literally life and death that you're, that you're going to have to do this. But let me tell you this, Esther, if you don't do it, if you don't do it, God's going to do, use somebody else to do it. And I don't know if, 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 if Mordecai said, listen, Esther, uh, God got rid of the other queen for you to be here. Okay? <laughs> he can do the same thing. Yeah. All right? He doesn't absolutely need you, but you were just the best fit at that moment. So you need to do this or else. You know, we're, we're all counting on you. You know, and, and no matter, and again, no matter what situation I'm going through, I can read God's word and, and, and at least read either somebody else that was going right through it or, or God's instruction through it. You know, and, and God has thousands of promises that you can read. And again, God cannot break a promise. Now, thank Amen. God he can't break a promise. You know, I, I can promise things. Till, till I turn blue. But to be honest with you, I don't keep all my promises. You know, things, circumstances happen, and you know what? Yeah, okay, I, I broke a promise. I'm sorry. You know, I, and I know I said I was going to do it, but I didn't do it. Or I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. You know, 
promises, you know, I, as, as me being a sinful person, I break promises. And you do too. Try it. Don't judge me. Okay? <laughs> you break promises too. Yeah. But God, God who never sinned, cannot break a promise. And we, we, I mean, we have so many promises, and to know that those promises are going to be kept. You know, I mean, that, that, that's, that's one of the greatest things that, that, uh, uh, to know about God. You know, that, 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 hey, I'm saved. Well, guess what? I'm forever saved. I don't have to worry about God breaking that promise, right? If there was a promise to God, hopefully not to break, it would be that one. You know, because reading about hell, that don't seem like a fun place to go. And so God cannot break a promise. And so thankfully, and so that was the uh, promises that we had uh, seen. And so on to the last point, I don't know if we're going to finish it, <laughs> but to our last point, okay, we're going to look at the incredible power, okay, the incredible power that Jesus had. And uh, he, which is the first point we have, is again, uh, let's read uh, verse 33. And we're going to see that it was manifested in his compassion. Okay, verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? Excuse me. Where they laid him, and, the, and they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the, the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself, come to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away. The stone. Uh, okay, I, 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 read, I read a little bit too far, but it's okay. Verse, verse 30, it was the last, last one. So here it is that we see that Jesus uh, had compassion, right? Jesus had compassion because, again, he, he was there and he, and he saw Mary and Martha. And, and I believe that those two, again, the Bible says that there were other Jews. It doesn't say who. But I believe that Mary and Martha uh, affected Jesus' emotions more than the other Jews did. Yeah. Because that was personal to them. Mm -hmm. Again, you can read in history how back in these times where they would hire mourners, right? So it'd be, it'd be like me saying, hey, church family, I'll pay you guys 100 bucks each. Come over here and cry, pretty much. Just be company. Okay, now, not saying that they weren't sincere about it. You know, I, I'm pretty sure Mary and Martha and, and Lazarus, they weren't hermits. I, I believe they had friends, right? And so, here it is. But again, I believe Jesus had more hurt towards uh, Mary and Martha than the others. Because again, it was personal to them. And Jesus knew them. It wasn't like it again. It wasn't like it was some stranger that came up to them and said, "Lord, my brother's sick. You know, this is the first encounter we're meeting you. We need you to come and heal our brother, please." You know, Jesus spent time with them. Jesus ate with them. Jesus fellowship with them. Jesus. I mean, again, I said it before. I believe that they considered themselves to be family. Yeah. And here it is that Jesus knew that Mary and Martha was going to have to watch their brother die. Was going to have to, I don't know if this sickness was a painful sickness or if it was just, just a, you know, just a, like a, I don't want to say just like a, but uh, like a, uh, a non hurtful sickness. I don't know which one there is. That's top of my head right now. Uh, but one where you just don't feel pain. Sleeping sickness. Sleeping sickness, right? Sure. And. But regardless, Mary Martha watched him die. And I, and I know that that touched Jesus. Because yeah. again, Jesus was a man. He had feelings. Amen. 
right? And we see, and we see that because again, in verse 35, which for those who might not know is the shortest verse in the Bible, is Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And again, I, I, I know he had compassion, right? Jesus showed compassion. Uh, you say, well, well, how do you show compassion toward me? Well, you're saved, aren't you? There's your compassion. Amen. Right? Jesus saw a lost, sinful person, and he said, I'm going to love you, and I'm going to save you. And here it is that Jesus wept. And again, I, I, I also believe that Jesus was hurt because of the unbelief that everyone had. Again, Mary and Martha both questioned Jesus. Jesus, if you would have been here four days ago, he would have been alive. But he's not. Now he's dead. And then again, we read in verse uh, 37 how, well, let's go back to 36. Some of them, I believe, believed. Uh, they said, uh, then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. Jesus loved Lazarus, okay? Jesus loved him. I, and again, I, Jesus, I, Jesus had brothers and sisters, okay? But I think Jesus and Lazarus was so close to my friends. Again, I, I almost, I imagine they were almost like David and Jonathan. Yeah. Where they were so much, I mean, it, even, even the testimony that they had, how it said, that the Jews said, behold, how he loved him. Mm -hmm. Jesus loved Lazarus. And again, and then verse 37, how some of them said, I, and I'm going to say it in my grade. Well, if he loved them so much, why is it that he can heal the blind people, but he couldn't allow him to live, keep him, keep him from being dead? You know, I, I don't want him as my friend if that's the case. Mm. You know, and again, I believe, and actually you read it in verse uh, 30, 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself. I believe that that hurt Jesus saying, Wow, the things that I've done, and yet these people still doubt me. You know, and at this point, I believe that Jesus said, you know what? Me saying it, I guess, isn't going to change their minds. Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to put the action behind it now. You know, I, I, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to say, you know what? Uh, Enough with this talk. Show me the grave. That's what he said. He said he groaned himself. It was a cave. And the stone laid upon it. And then uh, verse 39. Jesus said. Take ye away the stone. Take, take it away. You know what? Uh, it, it, it's about to be real. Okay. And we see. Uh, and. Uh, well the, the second point. Was it was manifested in his connection. Okay, and verse 41, the Bible says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead lay, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, because people of, because of the people which stand by I said it, that, thou, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Okay, so here it is, is Jesus he has a connection, right? Uh, and that being uh, what he, his first word in his prayer, Father, right? Jedediah and the twins, they have a good connection. At least I like to think I'm a pretty good connection. That's me. They can call me anytime, and I'll answer. And we see that Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And here it is, what I, what, I, what I absolutely love in verse 42. And I knew that thou heardest me always. You hear me always. You know, again, Jesus has that connection to where, you know, uh, uh, it'd be like, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know anybody. I, I'm not saying y'all don't know anybody, but it'd be like knowing somebody or it'd be like, hey, you know what? I got the president's phone number right in my phone right now. No, you don't. Watch this. I know it was president. 
those are, hey, Nathaniel, this is, this is, uh, this is a, this president, right? First, first ring. See that? That's a pretty good connection. I, I had to go through, uh, the secretary and all these voice things, right? Boom, straight to it. God has that connection to God, and he always hears Jesus. And we see that, uh, 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 in, uh, where is it? Uh, <clears throat> did I pass it? Pardon me. Uh, in Romans, there it is. Romans, oops, wrong way. Romans chapter 8. No, that's in verse 34. The Bible says, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that he is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And then in Hebrews chapter 7, in verse 25, Hebrews 7, verse 25, the Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he liveth forever, or seeing he, live, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Amen. Okay? So here it is, is that Jesus could have easily pray, prayed this prayer in his mind. Matter of fact, he, he, I mean, he could have just said, Father, just, you know, uh, let's just let's just get to the point. Right? I'm here. Let's just let's just raise them up. Don't really need to make a big commotion. Let's just get to the point. But I believe he prayed this out loud. So that way, those all those doubts that people had in their minds would stop. And I and I believe that it was mainly towards Martha, Mary and Martha. Right? I believe he wanted them because again. I think that his, when, 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 when the Bible says that the first time that when he groaned, I believe that was more towards Mary and Martha. Again, this is me. Y'all can take it however you guys would like. Was more towards them. And then the second time was more towards the people. Okay? And so I believe that Jesus said, I'm, in, in his mind, I'm going to pray this out loud. So that way everybody knows that I am God. I have the power over death. I'm not just some guy who can do miracles. I am the Messiah. And he said, again, he prayed, he prayed. And we see that uh, what we read before is that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. And you know what's great about that? Again, he says that he's, making, he's still making intermission. We say, Jesus, I need your help. Jesus, I, I have a favor to ask you. Well, Jesus is sitting right there next to God. He's saying, hey, your child, he needs you. You know, I mean, man, that, and, what, and, and nothing against you. I love you, but I thank God I don't have to come to you. Okay? <laughs> I thank God. <clears throat> Because there have been a lot of unconfessed sins. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. No. But, you know, it's just, you know, I, I don't have to go to him. Neither do you. Amen. Amen. You know, and I think you're thankful for that, too. Amen. <laughs> you know? We don't have to go to him. We have direct access to Jesus. We have that connection. Right? And here it is that, again, that... He prayed and he says, I, I'm, and he says, I knew that thou heard, right, hearest me always. I know you hear me all the time. Amen. You know, and, and we have that. And lastly, we see that his power was manifested in his control. Okay? Again, we see that uh, in verse 39, he's met. Uh, with Martha uh, in verse 40 we see that 
Uh, he soothes her fear. In verse 41 and 42, he, he does something that I believe everyone, before it happened, thought he was crazy. And uh, let's go ahead and read it. The Bible says, Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee, for thou hast heard me. Uh, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because the people would stand by it, I uh, stand by, I said it, that thou may believe it, that thou hast heard me, sent me, excuse me. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Here it is. He gets done praying. And he walks over there, and the Bible says that he uh, uh, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And just my thinking on it, uh, I think Lazarus did, I, I believe Lazarus got up from the, came back to life instantly. But I think it was one of those cinema pauses where it keeps you in suspense, where you're just like, He just said, Lazarus, come forth. Is he going to come forth? I don't know. You know, and then all of a sudden you see Lazarus come forth. And at this point, I think everybody's draw just. Yeah, yeah. And then Jesus says, hey, we going to lose some or what? <laughs> come on. Yeah. Let him go. Yeah. You know, I. I, I mean, pick up your jaw. I said this was going to happen. Let's go. And you know what? Uh, at this point, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, God raised him from the dead. The uh, Bible doesn't say that uh, his body didn't stink. So I imagine they're probably like, whoo. You were dead, Lazarus. Shower. <laughs> right? And then we'll throw the party. Right? I mean, burn his yeah. Burn the clothes. Take a shower. We're glad you're alive, though, you know. But here it is. No, I'm joking. I think they didn't care about the smell at that point. Uh, man, again, those people, all of them were there. They witnessed it. You know, they witnessed it. Now, I don't know. Uh, actually, actually, I do know because you read uh, in, in the latter part where some of those Jews, right? Uh, I guess, I guess as today we call them Karens, right? <laughs> did you see what Jesus did? Then? He just brought a man back to life. Shame yeah. on him. <laughs> We're going to tell the Pharisees. Oh, my. Pharisees, you know what Jesus is doing. He's, not only is he making blind people see and everything like that, but now he's bringing back people from the dead. Who said he did <laughs> Who gave him the authority? Right? And you know what the Pharisees said? What do you got? That's great news. Man, let's, we got a lot more people that are dead. Let's bring them to the graveyard. No. They said, tough, tough. We got to kill him. We got to get rid of this Jesus. Mm. Who does he think he is? I mean, somebody died. Let him rest in peace for heaven's sakes. You know? No. Jesus, again, he showed his power. And he showed that he has that control over death. You know, again, death didn't control <coughs> Jesus. When Jesus died, it wasn't death saying, ha, 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 I overpowered Jesus. I got him. No, Jesus says, you know what, death, you can take me. But in three days and three nights, <laughs> I'm coming back. Whether you, Well, I know you don't like it, but I'm coming back. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, and we see, again, how, and, and I believe at this point, 
that I think that Mary and Martha was kind of like Peter when uh, when uh, Peter tar when Jesus charged Peter said Peter uh, you know he asked him do you love me three times and then I think at that point at, the, at that moment that Jesus uh, that Peter did a one eighty Peter never doubted never uh, 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 never um, be, um, denied yeah I was like oh, what is it denied Jesus ever again you don't read it because I don't believe he did that's right. I think right here, I believe Mary and Martha never doubted Jesus. Amen. They said, oh, Jesus is God. We, we physically watched our brother die, and we physically watched our brother come back to life. I will never doubt Jesus again. I, I mean, you don't read it, but I'm sure they probably apologized. Jesus, we're sorry we doubted you. And I think Jesus understood. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, told you. Told you he was going to come back to life, but no. You don't want to believe me. No, Jesus understood. He said, listen, I understand. I forgive you, but I understand. And I think that Mary and Martha did a 180. Never doubted ever again. Said, you know what, Jesus, we know. We know this is the Messiah now. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We've seen it. And we see that Jesus had control. And, and, and I'll tell you this, and we'll end with this, is that no matter what circumstance, and again, we're, we, got, we got a couple more of these uh, Cases uh, which still deal in different aspects of life, but no matter what case you're going through, Jesus has control over it. And and let me just say this too. Uh, let, let me backtrack that one real quick. Jesus has control over it as much as you allow Him to have control over it. Because if you say, God, I don't want you to have nothing to do with it, then He'll back off. Amen. That's right. So Jesus has control over it. It's just as much as you allow it to have. To allow him to have control over it. But, again, Jesus, let me just, uh, let me just say this and, 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 and we'll go. Uh, if God can speak worlds into existence, yeah. he can take care of you Amen. in your case. If he can speak trillions of stars into existence. He can take care of you. If he can speak in water and fish and the, 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 the heavens and birds into existence and humans. And not just, well, he didn't speak humans, but I, I, I read the next point. If he can breathe the breath of air and handcraft human life, he can take care of you. If he can speak, and we did this on the first, the first one, if he can speak and calm a, a storm and, and, and make this, the, the, the waters to cease and the, and the wind to stop blowing, he can take care of you. Amen. We, didn't read, we haven't read it, and, and I, might, I might do one, but if he can cleanse a leper, we, we, you know, we read the Bible. If he can cleanse a leper, he can take care of you. And we read that he'd done it, uh, but if he can make the, the blind to see, he can take care of you. Jesus, again, uh, he went to the cross. He died. He was buried. And I love the term, too, a borrowed tomb. Borrowed tomb. Matter of fact, that, that cross was even borrowed. That wasn't his cross, you know. It was just, uh, you know, just, hey, this Jesus, he died and he rose again. He can take care of you. You know, no matter what case you're going to, uh, you're, you're, you're in, no matter what circumstance you're going through, I promise you, if we allow God to have full control, he'll take care of you. And he'll take that. Uh, and, and I was passing um, uh, in one of our jobs, I, I saw a sign and I was like, hey, like, yeah. Because it said, what man uh, deems impossible, God can make it possible. That's right. You know, and that's what we're looking at. We're looking at impossible cases where no, it, how only, it can only be explained by saying only God could have done that. Nobody else could have done that but God. And, you know, that that is... 
in a whole in this whole series, that's what I want to uh, just encourage is that well, a couple things. One, there's hope. You know, all these cases are what I, as I call it, hopeless cases, right? These are all hopeless cases where everyone looked at them and said, at some point, it's hopeless, right? So I want just to, to just uh, encourage y'all, no matter what you're going through, there is hope. And then, like I just said, how God is in control. If Amen. we allow God to be in control, there's hope. Amen. And so I just I just want to encourage you. And so that will conclude this one. And you'll just have to wait next week what the next one is. And Lord knows how long that one's going to take. So just uh, relax and enjoy the, ride. enjoy the ride. That's it. So we're going to go ahead and pray. And we'll be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time that we can come. And again, just sing uh, hymns unto you. And. And I have another opportunity to look into your word. Uh, Lord, I, I, I do pray that uh, we can find encouragement in this, that uh, even though it, it may seem hopeless, that we, we see that, again, that you have control over any circumstance, Lord. And I just pray that we can just allow you to just take control and, and, and be the center of our life. And, Lord, I just pray for, again, for the ones that aren't able to be here. Just meet the needs there. Uh, again, pray for the prayer requests that were mentioned. Just, uh, if it be will, just meet the needs there, Lord. Again, bless the remaining of the, the week. May we honor and glorify you. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.